Hello everybody and welcome back to Britain's Rare Guitars here at the Edge Conference Centre in Wigan. We are on, I would say, let's call it Book Corner now, Comfy Corner, Book Corner, of two very clever and knowledgeable editors with me who have both, both written fantastic books. We've got David Plew's Burst, Burst Believers number four, we'll talk about why it's number four in a minute, and we've got Gary Davis, nice to see you Gary, all the way from Cornwall. Uh, a huge thick book on the anniversary strat. Let's just talk, start with you, Gary. You, you've got celebrating 40 years of the Fender. You talked to me earlier where you, you wanted just to clear up and clarify why there are so many people out there think they've got an anniversary guitar and they haven't. Anniversary strat. Tell me why that is. Yeah, well, well as I bought um, about six years ago, I bought this anniversary strat. It's a limited edition 1954 anniversary strat made by the Fender factory and um, I saw different strats for sale uh, with a little red white and blue badge on the top saying 40th anniversary and I noticed there was a, a lot of confusion in the marketplace uh, about what actually was an anniversary strat and the short answer was that the ones with the red and white and blue badge aren't actually anniversary models because Fender put that badge on every a strat they made in 1994 to celebrate 40 years of the Stratocaster. These, this one is one of 1,954 uh, guitars made. And so I learned about it and I decided I'd spend six months writing a short guidebook. And it ended up being a five year project. And that was the. Result. Yeah, I mean, there's nearly 400 odd pages here. It's facts and figures, and, the, and there's some amazing one offs in here as well. Um, who did all the designs? Is it Pamelina? Oh, she uh, did the artwork on a lot of them. She, Pamelina did, uh, she painted some. For example, the Playboy uh, Strat she painted, um, a limited edition. You know, each one was hand painted by her. A, a shot of Marilyn Monroe. Um, it was a calendar, It was a shot from the very first uh, edition of Playboy. She painted those. She she helped to design the Harley Davidson anniversary Strat and uh, some other Strats as well. Um, but the book is about the guitars, and then the second half, it's all about the past and present master builders of the custom shop. I mean, like David, um, David's book in a minute, the, the research, I mean, there's Hank, there's Jimmy, there's all the, there's a car there, there's a Ferrari there. Like, I mean, the facts and figures are incredible. It's every, were they all, everybody so helpful? Was it hard to get the knowledge out of Fender themselves and maybe meet people who did the old windings or the pickups, and, you know, back in the day? The, well, the, the people were very helpful, coming back to that first, point, uh, when I say the people, the master builders, the folks that actually build the guitars were very, very helpful. And, and six years ago, I didn't know anyone in the guitar building industry. Uh, I've written books on business subjects before, and this is my first book on guitars. So I contacted folks like the principal master builder, Yuri Shishkov in the custom shop, oh, yes, yes. and they were really, really helpful. They gave me information. You know, I went over and met them. I interviewed them. Uh, they sent me personal photographs and so on. Um, Any from the back in the 50s and the 60s that's, that's still alive that you met? Um, well, actually, there is one particular person. I, I, um, I didn't meet her in person, but I interviewed her, and that was Abigail Yabara. Uh, folks may well know a little bit about Abigail. Mm -hmm. And um, she joined Fender in 1956 when Leo uh, Fender was there, when it was still his company, and she told me how she, she got a job at Fender and how eventually she began to wind pickups and so on. Mm -hmm. Told me special things that Leo, you know, names he used to call her, things that happened. And so that was something I didn't expect to, you know, uh, to, to find mean, out. Back then, they were just, you know, winding away. Did you see that on TV last night? How much were your shoes? And just stick it in a box. Roughly, roughly going to the wind. And mate, he's taking them out of the other end and putting my guitar any place. And you, 50, 60 years later, say, well, I got one with a neck pickup so loud. Of course, it was probably over wine. There was no regimental of the winding so much then, was there? No, no, I mean, it, uh, and when CBS took Fender over, um, you know, things changed and he brought in big industrial machines to do it. It was only yeah. when a um, guy called Mike Eldry was uh, running the custom shop after John Page left that uh, he, uh, Abigail went back to the custom shop, went back to Fender, having been laid off previously, and went back and they, from a marketing point of view, established, you know, the hand wound pickup and Abigail hand signed pickups, and Fantastic. then that since moved on to Josefina Campos, who's taken over, picked up the banner and taken it forward. But um, yeah, so all very different. I've read in here that it, the, I mean, the journey was a real journey. You've been everywhere. Well, everywhere. I've been to a few places. I didn't, yeah, I mean, I've been uh, uh, around uh, Southern California. Uh, 
north and south uh, to meet past and present master builders. And I, um, I've been over to Japan to track down a one-off uh, Disney anniversary strap that um, was made and is for sale at the moment if anybody wants it for fifty thousand dollars in Japan and I tracked that down. Um, so it's taken me. Uh, Playboy. Yeah. Funny There's some interesting, some interesting quotes. <laughs> some interesting quotes uh, from the guy, the Playboy guy, when they came up with their idea with the Fender Custom Shop and how they uh, had the prototypes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there we go, folks. Celebrating forty years of the Fender commem commemorative model Stratocaster. It's a great book and Gary's out there in a minute signing books if you want to have a look and take a look at that. that I mean that's that's a very clever book. Thank you Gary. You're now, welcome. Thank you Lawrence. Trying to stay awake over here is <laughs> doing well. <laughs> Half past four this morning. Oh I know I know. <laughs> David Plews this is Burst Believers 4. Why four? Um, the original author is uh, Victor Pra, which most people have heard of mm -hmm. and he produced Burst Believers 1 and 2, and he was running out of steam, and the publisher wanted him. There's, there's roughly, they made 1,700 of these guitars, and we know where about 1,000 of them are, and they're very, very expensive. And Vic Dupra is a collector and an authority on the guitar, but he wanted more UK guitars, so he looked for a victim in the United Kingdom. And I was I was the victim, <laughs> so um, I helped produce Burst Believers three. If you can just hold that one up, Lars, and if, let the let the camera see. And this is Burst Believers three, and this is the the Mick Taylor X Rolling Stones oh, lovely, yeah. guitar. And I, I went down, came down to Manchester to see Simon to do the, re, the review for this and did the article for this. Then I did the Paul Kossoff burst. And I did, I did several others, Mick Grabham out of Procol Harum. So we produced Burst Believers 3 and we thought, well, the well is dry. You, you can only find so many of these. And then the publisher said, no, we've got to have Burst Believers 4, but we want to get the big boys. Mm. We want to get Clapton, we want to get Jimmy Page, and we want to get Jeff Beck. Fantastic. So which one have we got here? Well, this is the Mick Taylor. This is a, this is a 1959, and um, many people in this room will have seen um, Phil Harris in 2014, when he played Greeny, mm -hmm. he played the this which we call it. It was called the Exile Burst, but it's really the STP Burst. Tip it up a bit so we can see it out the front. And the Paul Kossoff Burst, and I, I produced and authored the the DVD for Phil Harris. So Phil Harris is he he was playing another 59 l earlier on today, but he was also playing this guitar, mm, mm, mm. and uh, we had a fun day. It's got essence of everything. Look at it, it's all gone orange and stuff. Yeah. This, if anybody goes onto YouTube and they, they look for uh, Lowell George and Little Feet mm -hmm. in the Rainbow uh, Theatre down in London in 1977, Mick Taylor was a guest on that and you will see him playing and the guitar, I don't know if you can see it but there's a very very distinctive flash goes down here and you can, and you can see that is that okay Mr Cameraman? Yeah and there's also this dog leg in here so it's, it's not a burst that, it's not a magnificent it's a faded burst, it's not the 3D elements mm. in the guitar. It's a great guitar, and I believe Mick Taylor would like it back. <laughs> no chance. Well, there we go, folks. We've got uh, so burst Defender Book the Strat Burst. Look at that. Fantastic. And they, both these fellas are outside signing books, looking at books. You can pick them up and have a look, a closer look. I think it shows what today is all about, really. It's, um, it's very nerdy, isn't it? It's very guitar nerdy. I today, love today it. has been a wonderful day because everybody that is in here are vintage guitars, you yeah. know, and we, if there's anything that we like to do, it's talk about the guitars. We love it. Gary, thank you very much. You're most David, welcome. David, thank you very much. Thank you.